welcome to the happy writing late night show. You might wonder, it's bright daylight, hey, <laughs> that's not a late night show. But I promise you one thing, somewhere on this world, it's night. <laughs> so what are you going to expect on this very first late night show? Uh, we're going to talk about Ernest Hemingway and about book layouts and I think that will be pretty exciting. You know that a book layout follows some rules, right? Everybody knows that, but which ones? I have to admit, when I did my very first book layout, that was about four years ago, I tried myself uh, in Adobe InDesign and I have to admit I'm not good at it. Oh my god, this tool can do so many things, I just didn't get it right. And what I did not get right was which margin rules you have to follow when layouting your book by yourself. So there are tools in the internet and I highly recommend them in my courses where the margins and everything is prepared for you. You now might get a bit curious but I show it to you at this very first novel of mine Luckily, lucky me, I had a friend who did the layout for me. And you know, some maybe you have asked yourself the question, why is the margin um, so huge here, the outer margin? Um, mostly with novels. So non-fictional books follow other rules. But I did not know about this margin size. So they say that for a, an average book size, which might be six to nine inches, you should have a margin of 0 0.85 inches. Why? Because when you read it, you hold that book, right? See, yeah, that's enough space for my thumbs. <laughs> I didn't know that. Did you? Now let's talk about writer's mindset and how to push it, create it, form it. Do you remember one or two sentences your mom used to say? Your dad? So, which sentences do you remember? Were they uplifting? Unfortunately, I remember one sentence very clearly. Um, I must have been about 8 or 10 years old and I wanted to become a flight attendant. That was my dream. Flight attendant, oh my god. Um, that was in the 70s. So um, nowadays I would say I want to become a pilot, of course, but in these days for a girl, hmm, you didn't think about that. So I told my mom I want to become a flight attendant. And you know what she said? She said, you know, becoming a flight attendant, you have to be very pretty and speak at least three languages. So she didn't mean to break my passion. I think her point was you have to study languages, at least three of them, right? But I heard you are not pretty enough. At the age of 10, your mind is different, right? It's not a grown up mind. And most kids don't re-ask, um, hey mom, what's the point? I mean, I'm pretty. <laughs> so within seconds, 
my flight attendant career was gone. And maybe you had similar experiences about writing. I had some experiences like that with my writing, but honestly, I was grown up then and I didn't care. And I still don't care what people think. I had a wonderful, wonderful chat yesterday um, with a podcaster from Canada and he said, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm good enough, if my writing is good enough, if people want to read it. And I said, if there's one person out there who reads your book and loves it, that's enough. Because no matter how famous you are, when do you get the chance to talk to your fans? When do they really tell you how much they like your book? You never have that, right? I mean, you have to be very famous to get those fan letters or emails and then um, make your secretar secretary answer them because you're not capable of all that fan emails. Um, yes, this might be the case, but before you get that famous, you will be a normal writer, for example, like I am. And with this book, I just got one email. Um, a guy who wrote, hey, um, that book impressed me so much, I love it. And I was all happy that was that one person out there. So, always keep in mind, no matter what people say about your writing, um, if people come up with, you really want to become a writer? Come on, don't care. Forget it. Just do it. Keep passionate and do it. That's my advice at this wonderful late night show in bright sunlight. Tell you what, my dear friends, life is a circle. It's one day before Christmas and my book number 10 just arrived. So I'm here in my tiny, tiny car um, and as you will see in a second, there's, um, there was no, no place for the dog left. So she, she just um, rode here uh, in my like coat, <laughs> covered in my coat. It's a crazy day. As you can see here, uh, <laughs> So I'm still in the driver's seat and it's all covered with books here and back there books, books, books and I'm so freaking excited to unpack them. So here we are all excited and this is Lexi, the fabulous photographer who did all the photos and layout for the book and now we are excited and just go right oh my god <laughs> yeah. ah. these things are heavy heavy I had five of them in my tiny car as you saw and oh gosh tiny Wanda is scared oh my 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 <laughs> It's book number 10. We are unpacking book number 10. It's the second book for you, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and now I guess you have to sit down. Otherwise, you oh. just cut off your head in the video. I mean, okay. <laughs> not to be all too creepy or spooky. Oh, they packed again. I can't. <laughs> there are some more boxes in it. Can you believe it? <laughs> okay, more boxes. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. And now, here we go. There's just some, like, oh. oh I can't believe it. Here it. Oh, gosh. It's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. Oh, I love it. Here's Cooking with the Stars, number two. 
your second book, my tenth book. Oh, I love it! I love it! Gosh! It's good, isn't it? Yeah. <gasps> Gosh! Now, and this one's for you! Take a close look! Ta -da. Now that was... The unpacking of my book number 10. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's unbelievable. For me it is. And it still is one of these everyday miracles when I start a new book or finish one. Love it. Do you know what Ernest Hemingway's secret was? I will tell you about that. Honestly, I will not promise you that you can write like Ernest Hemingway after doing my courses or watching my videos. I won't do that. But I will tell you about some techniques, the big ones the famous authors used or invented. And I can promise you, if you follow those rules, your writing will improve. Let me grab your hand and walk you through that. So, Ernest Hemingway, he was very famous about his absolute on-spot descriptions of situations, people, but he didn't describe them. Meaning, Ernest Hemingway as a journalist, he was used to write in a very short and precise way. For newspaper writing you do that. And he created what he called the iceberg theory, meaning that you as an author, you have to know everything about your characters. Everything. Ernest Hemingway was convinced that if you know everything about your characters, you do not have to write it down because your reader, reading your well-chosen, precise words, will get the information which is below the waterline, like the iceberg. And the information below the waterline has to be much more than what's above the waterline, same as an iceberg. So, whenever you Start writing your novel. Be sure that you know a lot about your main character. Don't start without knowing who they are. If you want to know more about that, please watch my videos, subscribe my channel, like my videos and comment them, ask questions or hop into the free webinar and ask your questions there or book a call with me and let's talk about your book project. I want to grab your hand and walk with you, at least for a while.